Hey guys, um, God, there I go again saying um, and you know, I look in the mirror before I go on camera and these don't look like this. Well, um, there I go again, I'm so sorry. Okay, I've left Pahrump and I'm on my way back to Colorado. I have a doctor's appointment on April 10th and I just stopped myself from saying, um, oh, be proud of me. So I'm taking my time going back. I don't know what the weather's like up in the mountains of Utah. I know they've been slammed with snow this year. So I'm just taking my time right now. I don't even know where I am. Um, Malapa? Yeah. I'm at Terrible's, the gas station I stayed at on my way in a couple months ago, a few months ago. And when I got here, well, I had plugged my phone in the truck to charge it. And as I'm getting Elliot out, my daughter called. So I grabbed my phone, I put Elliot in the, in the camper, and Owen was already in here, Violet was already in here, and uh, I said, let me just go grab Gideon, the cat. So I put my phone down, and I went out to get Gideon. He got, you know cats, you could try and take them out of the crate, and they're like, you know, like a two-year-old trying to put in the car seat. So I put my keys down. I don't know why I didn't put them in my pocket. You know where this is going, right? Put my keys down in Violet's bed in the front seat. And as I hit that lock button and shut my door, I'm like, oh yeah, the keys are in the trailer. Not. Yeah, they're in the truck. In Violet's bed. So I, luckily I had my phone and luckily Daisy had called me. So I called uh, Geico and they said, it'll be about an hour. Well, 11.44 came and went when the ETA was, and they texted me and said, if they're not there, you know, call them. So I did, and um, they put me in touch with the towing company, and I said, you know, I'm here for a lockout. What's your ETA? Well, they couldn't find where I was. I, I don't know why. My um, GPS was on, my location was on, and they said it wasn't, and I couldn't, when I first tried you know, when you call your insurance company, you have to go through all these prompts, and then they send you a text, and then you have to hit the link. Why can't someone just answer the phone? So I go inside to ask directions, I mean, ask for the um, address here, and that young woman, which I called a man at first, said, excuse me, sir, because she was down, stocking a shelf, had her back to me, short hair. So she was very rude, but I got the address, and the uh, Geico found found it, so they said, and apparently they didn't. So when I got a hold of the tow truck company, I told the girl where I was. I said, I'm at the new Terribles gas station here in Moapa. Oh, okay, I can't find, oh, I can find, is there an Arco? I said, oh, yeah, I think there is an Arco across the street. So two minutes later, the tow truck driver calls me, and I tell him, I keep getting the ring light in my eyes, here we go. I said, I'm at the new terrible. Oh, I know exactly where you are. He goes, I'll be there in about 45 minutes. I'm like, geez, Louise. Now, I got here at quarter to 10 this morning. He didn't get here till like 1.30. Thank goodness Gideon wasn't in the truck or any of my animals were in my truck. Uh, it would have turned out differently. And, I mean, he was really nice. He unlocked it. And I'm like, you know, I used to work for a towing company. I was a dispatcher. My ex was a driver. And I don't know why I don't have a lockout kit. I seriously don't. Um, I'm going to ask my kids for one for Mother's Day. Uh, Daisy, you hear that? Tell your brothers that's what I want for Mother's Day. Um, so that was my morning and part of the afternoon. But I met a guy yesterday. He pulled into prom. And I don't believe he watches me. Um, oops. It was very nice. He drove by. He was parked down on my road, which is a dead end. And uh, he had another cargo trailer, small one. And very nice man. We had a nice conversation. And then last night he came back over with his business card. Really nice man. So I asked him, you know, I said, my door's wide open because it was so windy. And I said, do you want to, you know, take a look at my trailer? And he said, sure. Now, hold on, let me see if I can fix this. Okay. Is that better? Kind of. Now it's in this eye. Um, Elliot went nuts. Now, Elliot is almost 16 years old. He has never cared for men. Uh, he has bitten two of them. I never discipline him when he is being protective 
over me or over us, over his home, his vehicle. So I sat on the bed and, you know, it takes a lot for him to get up and, and do what he did. I put my finger loosely through his collar and I told him it's okay. And the guy had leaned over to, you know, touch Elliot, which was fine. And next thing I know, Violet, who was behind me over here under her blanket, came out like a bat out of hell. She is growling, she's barking, her tongue's flying out of her mouth where she has no teeth. She's just going nuts. Now she's 14, she's blind, she's deaf, and she can't smell. So she sensed something. I think she might be able to hear a little bit more than she can smell. She knew something was going on. She sensed that Elliot was upset. And so I picked her up, of course, and I'm comforting her. You know, I'm telling her it's okay. She's going nuts. She never in her life, in 14 years of me having her, acted like that, ever. Now, she has been beaten before I got her. She was 12 weeks old when I got her. Um, a lady that I met at a food a feed store, I was buying dog food, asked me if I wanted a puppy in Louisiana. And I said, you know, what kind? She goes, it's a little chihuahua, it's 12 weeks old. My grandkids, who are two and three, are beating the crap out of it. I said, I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't like small dogs. I only got Elliot, which I love my dogs. I only got Elliot because I was only allowed a 30 pound dog where I lived at the time. It was right after my son was killed. The therapist said, it's time for you to get a dog. Because I had a dog, the German short hair. And when I was in Maine taking care of everything, my son-in-law had her and gave her away to a pound, along with our kitten. That's a whole nother cup of tea there. Um, that's the only reason I have a small dog like that. I'm a large dog person, but I got Violet and you couldn't touch her. The only place you could touch her where she would not go nuts to try and bite you was around her, her middle. That was her safe zone. So it took years for her to kind of come out of that and you couldn't cut her nails. I'm a groomer. So my whole career has been dogs and it takes us, I can now do it over the past couple years since I've been alone. I've been able to still wrap her neck up where she can't get me or put a cone on her. But she still tries to get me. Um, you have to wrap her up to cut her nails, but I get it done. They need to be done right now. But this man says to me, you shouldn't hold that dog and comfort it like that when it's behaving that way. He has no idea what Violet's been through. I mean, she had a head trauma too, to, which caused the first hematoma on her ear. And then she walked into um, the stabilizer, which caused the second hematoma on the other ear. But the head trauma is what made her go blind. And then she walked into a brick and scratched her eyeball. And now she has a dry eye in that one. He has no idea what she's been through. He has no idea what my life has been with animals. And he stood in my home and looked at me while I'm comforting my 14-year-old blind, deaf dog and said, you shouldn't comfort her when she behaves that way. After I just told him she's deaf and blind, I was livid. I, I couldn't speak. And I'm a nice person. I don't like conflict. And I said nothing. So he was here about another hour. We're outside talking. Very nice man. A very, I mean, he's a nice guy. But he's that type of guy who, and I don't even care if he's watching this. I don't. Um, who, who has to carry on the conversation and interrupts you and doesn't question anything that you say. You know, conversation goes both ways. You question each other and you continue the conversation. And it, it so after he left, um, I was trying to read. I'm reading Dean Kuntz's book, um, A Big Little Life, about his golden retriever, who was a service dog. And I used to raise C&I dogs uh, for 10 years. And so this book means, it touches my heart. So I'm trying to read this, and I'm just thinking about what he said about my poor dog. And sometimes those little things just get me, and they eat away at me. So I'm thinking, I, I, I couldn't call Debbie because she's sick. I, I needed to call Dee, my friend Dee in Texas, because she... She has known Violet for a long time. We've lived with her. I took care of her when she had a stroke. And um, she she knows Violet. And she knows how Violet acts. And I'm like, I was just so upset about this. And Dee texts me. 
five minutes later, D text me because I'm thinking, I'm, let me just read. I'll get it out of my, my system. It'll be fine. It was just a comment. I'm never going to see this man again. And then D text me. So I call her and I just unload it on her. And, you know, I just, to me, he was disrespectful to me in my home. He was disrespectful to my dog. You don't do that. Does he go into someone's house and tell a parent how to raise their child? I just, it gets me. Just, okay, that, that was it. That was it. And then as he's like going to touch Elliot, Gideon's up here on the shelf. And Gideon's looking at him. And I said, look to your left. I said, there's my cat. And Gideon's look on his face. Now, Gideon doesn't care for men either. I thought Gideon was going to rip this man's face off. Um, yeah, my animals, since we've been on the road, they have met a lot of people. A lot of people have been in and out of my trailer. And Elliot usually does react to men. And he usually barks a little bit, and then he settles down. I mean, he's, he's old. But the cat, yeah, there was something about him that all three of my animals didn't like. But I'm sorry, uh, if you're watching this, you know, I really don't care. I don't care. Don't ever disrespect someone and their pet, their child, their spouse, anything in their home again. But that's my public service announcement to you, mister. All right, guys. Um, sorry, I rattled on. I, I just, I told my daughter, I said, I'm putting this in a video. And then she said, just let it go, mommy. I am. I'm letting it go. But it just, it hurt. I don't have children anymore at home. I have my pets and they're seniors other than the puppy. And this poor little girl. If you're new, here she is. Don't get scared. How can someone say something like that to not comfort this little creature? She's a blessing to me. I never liked little dogs until I got this one, right? All right, guys, I'll let you go.